All right. So Warriors Kings game four made history as being the most watched first round playoff game since 02. 02. Okay, that's that's a big deal. At one point, they had 10.2 million watchers at one point. I think it was like 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern time. Wow. Um, Crazy. Or excuse me, Western time. I, I cannot believe um, how much hype of playoff round one series has gotten. But this, this, this series is very special. And to talk about it, I'm introducing a nice friend of ours, uh, Dave DeFore. We are actually... <laughs> co-workers at The Athletic, <laughs> host right. for The Athletic. You've probably heard his voice before, uh, talk at NBA. And I know that this series has been a very fun one for you to talk about and cover. Uh, well, the Warriors are basketball nirvana to me. You know, the way Steph Curry <laughs> plays. I mean, it really is. That's beautiful okay. basketball. It's the <laughs> yes. modern version of that Spurs system uh, and, and a little bit of triangle stuff thrown in. So as a basketball coach, you know, that's uh, that's kind of my thing. And then the Kings play yep. an up-tempo version of that, and they're young and up-and-coming. And so you've got that whole narrative where the, the Warriors, who were at one point the upstart young team, are now the old dogs yep. trying to hang on, you know, defending a title. Right. So it has the right. on-court stuff. It has Steph Curry, which that's ratings in and of itself. And it has this fun right. Kings team. So it's got everything <laughs> for me. It's it's really cool to see. Yes, I feel like this, like the Warriors are looking in the mirror and playing their younger self. And that's a really mm -hmm. cool thing. And then you think about Mike Brown being the mastermind behind it is even another <laughs> added yeah. layer. Um, I yeah. think that this box injury, though, there's been a lot of things going throughout this series, you know, whether it's the Draymond suspensions um and just gary payton getting hurt like all these different things getting involved now De'Aaron fox is hurt and we know that he has been scoring out of this world for the the kings and being a pivotal point for why the kings are in this series um, and we're able to take the first two games it would suck if this series came down to is he able to play on this finger yeah, he mm -hmm. has been the most dangerous player in the series once the fourth quarter hits. And, and mm -hmm. the reason that yes, they were up 2-0 right. is because De'Aaron Fox yeah. just owns the fourth quarter. He did it all year. Uh, he's a star. He is proving to me that he's a 16-game player. You know, shout out to Draymond for that one. But he's shown up <laughs> in this series in a big-time way. And, you know, the finger injury, it's probably going to bother him. It's on his shooting hand. It's that index finger. Very important for shooting. But with that being said, he's such a gamer. I never had any doubt that he was going to play. And I bet we don't mm. notice unless he aggravates it. So maybe he catches it on a jersey. Mm. It gets hit, you know, on a foul. And, you know, you know, look. Let's be realists here. Basketball players, if they know a guy's hurt, they're going to go after it a little bit. I'm not going to say anyone's going to do anything right. dirty, but, you know, the ball right. in the hand it might not be a foul. So I, I just I worry about him aggravating it. But with that being said, I expect him to have a big game. Uh, I think he's going to be able to keep it close to so going back to Sacramento. Warriors have all the momentum, so they need De'Aaron Fox to come out. I think early he needs to arrive, not fourth quarter. He needs first quarter, fourth quarter De'Aaron Fox. I yeah. agree. And Do you, you know, think you said, oh, go ahead, Kelsey. Yeah, no, I think you said such great points. And I think that's kind of why I'm not seeing as much worry on social media. I mean, and De'Aaron Fox said it in the end. Like, I'm still going to give it my all. I'm still going to play tough. You guys talked about it. He's been Mr. Clutch, and that's what you need in playoff basketball. But all that to say, you know, for the Sacramento Kings, if he isn't able to be his full self that we've been able to see, you know, you talk about guys mm. needing to step up. And somebody I think that's been mentioned, DeMontis Sabonis. And I would love your thoughts on him and, you know, how he can make hopefully more of an impact in this series if the Kings are able to come out, which Malik Monk has said he sees them coming out of this first round against the Warriors. What about your thoughts on that? Well, not to sound repetitive, but 16 game players versus 82 game players and Demonis Sabonis might just be an 82 game player. I mean, he put up incredible mm. numbers during the regular season, but he can eat innings. And, and he can be tough mm -hmm. in the regular season. But we see once you get to the playoffs, it's basically a different sport and he can be mitigated. Yeah. You know, the Warriors mm -hmm. in the first two games, they didn't do a good enough job of forcing Sabonis outside the three point line on those. They weren't picking up early enough to force them farther away from the basket on those actions. 
but he's pretty much just been mitigated by Looney and, and Draymond Green. They're not worried about his scoring. He's not going to shoot. They don't guard him. Basically, you know, mm-hmm. you're you're sending two people to the man coming off the dribble handoff instead of worrying about Sabonis. And so if you don't have to worry about a player involved in an action, that that's a double team. So he's been ineffective. Yeah. And, and I, I mentioned this after game one. I thought this could be a big Alex Lynn series because he's got like a six inch height advantage over every single warrior. Yeah. So when you look <laughs> at the 11 or so minutes, he's playing a game. I mean, the guy has been positive. Right. He has won all of his mm-hmm. minutes. And so I'm not saying you shake up the starting lineup or anything like that, but I think that maybe if Sabonis doesn't have it going and he's ineffective, go to Alex Lynn earlier. If you're the Kings, because right. you, you know, it's going to get late really early. If they go back right. to chase center down three, two, after being up two Oh, it's mm-hmm. a wrap. They're not mm-hmm. coming back from that. They're not even going to see game yeah. seven. Yeah. That's why I'm so excited for tonight because there is so much pressure on the Kings to make sure they went at home, but the warriors have such, as you mentioned before, Dave, all of the momentum um, and we're seeing yeah kind of like the makings of an explosive game. We still haven't had a game six clay because it's not game six yet, but we haven't had that clay game, <laughs> right? That you know right, right. he's capable of doing. And because he's been playing so well defensively, I just feel like it's brewing. It's it's, it's there. Um, and I know that The Athletic has talked about that as well. I, I want to touch on some of these kind of storylines around um, what's going to happen in the next round with either one of these two teams and and why the pressure is on them to close now, because I think it was Charles Barkley that talked about, you want to win one game at a time. So if you go back, if you're, you just mentioned this point, Dave, if you come back and Sacramento, you're like, we got to close at home. But for the Warriors, it's, we just have to win one game, one game. And uh, you think about, you know, Lakers and Grizzlies still going technically. You think about people needing rest and things of that sort. Who do you think there's more pressure on to get to the next round more quickly, I guess, the Kings or the Warriors? I mean, it's got to be the Warriors because who knows how long they can Mm, keep doing this. You know, the Draymond could opt out this summer (laughs) and the whole thing is over potentially. Um, You know, Steph Curry's 35 years old. And and for the Kings, their season was a success. The the moment that they won 30 games, it was a success. Mm. So uh, everything (laughs) since then has just been found money. And and it's a great story and it's something to build on. But we're seeing, this is the early, early years of the Sacramento Kings. I think that they're on the way up. Mm. I mean, Mike Brown is a championship level coach, I believe. I mean, he's gotten to the finals as a head coach. He obviously won rings as assistant coach. He's a, a great vibes coach. It's so obvious he's set the culture there that's going to lead them into a brighter future. But the pressure is all on the Golden State Warriors. They're the defending champions. They underperformed all season long. And everyone has been saying last year's a fluke. Every year they get some injury Mm. luck, right? Everyone's got a story, a way to knock the titles. And they have to live up to it. But but the big thing is the dynasty is running out of time. These guys are getting older. And again, the Draymond contract situation, you know, this suspension in the playoffs just shown a bright light right on that yeah. that whole dynamic and, and you have to wonder you know how much longer can everyone deal with this and also how mm. much longer can they afford it because the new cba is going to factor into all this so yeah the pressure's all on the warriors but they've been here before yeah that's true that's true okay. I, I assumed you're you may you're possibly going to talk about the injury maybe being like we we want to get closer to the end so that De'Aaron has time to rest that finger but let's talk about injury mm-hmm. Uh, because they've been everywhere. Um, they have permeated throughout the league and made an impact um, on potentially the outcome of series, uh, where where teams are right now in their in their uh, their matchups. I think probably the first one, PG, Paul George, even yeah. before playoffs started, not being able to uh, play, and now obviously Kawhi Leonard, his teammate, also sitting, and now that series is over. Um, I'm curious, Kelsey, where do you think is the most impactful injury so far of this playoffs? Mm, well, first off, let me just say, it's been heartbreaking to see this. And, and this is yeah. why health is so important in the NBA and why depth is so important. Also knowing that next man up and who can fill in um, in any one right. of them. You know, I'm in the DMV, so I'll tell you, our hearts were broken 
when we saw Victor Oladipo go down. You know, he's one of mm. ours. We know how hard he's worked his way back. And honestly, I think that's why right. I'm not saying that he was the most impactful player on the Miami Heat, but just knowing that Jimmy Butler probably took all of that personally. And I think they have probably just a new sense. You know, I think that's why we're seeing the Miami Heat just be so good, and especially Jimmy Butler be so good, mm. because he's known how much he's had to step up. Tyler Hero, I mean, just think about what Miami has been through, and Bam Adebayo, right, not having all of his best games. And so I think when you look at this Miami team, that's why it's, it's even more impressive seeing what they're doing. And yes, I know you could say, you know, well, the Bucks didn't have Giannis the full series because of the injury, but still, no one gave Miami any hope. Am I right? I mean, people really thought the yeah. Bucks just breeze through. Many people have the Bucks going to the finals, right? At one point, they were the top team in the East. Now, I know Sportsbook has since put the Celtics on top, but Miami, I mean, the Milwaukee Bucks are still right there. But all in all, I mean, my heart just breaks for the Miami Heat just because of, I mean, they've had to go through this now multiple times with multiple players. But luckily for them, they've seen guys step up. And honestly, I think now they've been one of the most fun teams to watch in the NBA, this playoff series. And again, well, how lucky are they though that Jimmy Butler turns into playoff Jimmy and he's just continued to deliver um, bucket after bucket after bucket. So again, I, that one was personal uh, for me. He said he's just playing basketball. That's true. He said he's that, just I'm going to give him his credit. I'm going to give him his credit. Nah, we don't look like that, Jimmy. You want another level. Hey, Everybody else is back, here and you're here. <laughs> back to the 16 game player thing. That's Jimmy Butler, right? I mean, mm, he, this is a guy, right, he's yeah. been to a finals. I mean, we know how he shows up. A single elimination game, you're giving me any player in the league, and there's a chance I might take Jimmy Butler. He's shown up time and time and time again. I mean, this game, one of the greatest playoff performances ever. You know, you mentioned their downtown Tyler Hero. We can argue yeah. the utility of Victor Oladipo for this team. I, I think that right. uh, mm -hmm. Tyler Hero, much bigger loss, obviously, because he was the mm -hmm. only other guy that could stir the drink for them on offense. And now it's all Jimmy Butler, who spends yeah. eight months of the regular season playing around, making us all think that he forgot how to shoot. He shows up with the, you know, the ridiculous That's hairdo true. just to troll us once playoff time comes just around troll, and right. he's going to just own the world. And we all have to show that photo. Yeah, this guy. I mean, he played the so long true. game on this thing, right? He is insane. He did. But he did. back to the injuries, because I actually think the injuries have already potentially affected the championship outcome of this year's mm, playoffs. Yeah. I mean, this Giannis right. in injury is major. The 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 Bucks mm -hmm. look old and they look slow and unathletic when Giannis isn't out there. And he wasn't 100% in that game. He looked a little gimpy and tight toward the end. Chris right. Middleton has been mm. bad. I mean, real bad defensively. Jimmy Butler ate them alive. Mike Budenholzer made no adjustments. Drew Holiday taking no. bad shot after bad shot. And so this is one of those things where the Bucks have gotten stuck playing one way and they can't break yeah. out of it because they don't have the guys to do it. You mentioned depth before. Yeah. They just don't actually have playoff depth. And yeah. neither does Miami. Miami's doing this sheer on sheer will of Jimmy Butler, <laughs> and that is it. I'm giving no one else any credit. Kyle Lowry has been I'm okay. Bam out of bio has been bad. Caleb Martin's hitting shots. I, I'm telling you, Jimmy Butler, <laughs> that dude is, I mean, he's got some Michael Jordan sort of uh, soul in yeah, him yeah. somehow. I, I don't know what's going on with this guy, but I, you know, I complained about the Miami heat making the playoffs because I frankly mm -hmm. just kind of hate watch them. They, they play this yeah, really yeah. physical style. They muck it up. They can't <laughs> shoot. And Jimmy Butler mm. has been a revelation. I have enjoyed every minute of Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. So I'm shutting my mouth about the Miami Heat. No more <laughs> hating on him for me. But the, the playoff <laughs> picture is completely different. The finals has already been affected. You know, the Suns, they got out of this series. And I'm telling you right now, if Kawhi yeah. Leonard had stayed healthy, it at least goes seven That's another one and they be might lose mm -hmm. because they don't have depth either. And so they get to their next round right. matchup with the nuggets. The nuggets have been doing this all year long. All their guys are playing really well. And you know, the, the Timberwolves put up yeah. a hell of a fight, but the nuggets are such a better team. I think the nuggets mm -hmm. and Suns. you said it was going to go seven in, in the pre previous segment, Zena. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I think the nuggets Ooh. might be able to do this in six they just they they can really? just pound okay. them relentlessly. I'm not sure who's going to guard Jokic. That series is really interesting to me. I the reason why I think it's going to go seven is because I think it's going to be a sludge, because Denver mm. just hasn't been that consistent for me. They've had high games. They've had games. I mean, to me, last night was all I needed to see that Phoenix even down the amount of players that they need, aka some depth. 
people that can come in beyond Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and put the ball in the bucket and, and Tori Craig. Uh, like, I feel like there's going to be some sludge games. And that's going to be the thing that's going to extend this series to a much longer one than we probably want. But it'll be fun yeah. because <laughs> I would love to see Jokic. Oh, I want seven. Joker. I want seven. I mean, <laughs> want Jokic versus Kevin Durant. We all want seven. Game it's seven fun. down the line. Yeah. <laughs> sludge games. That's what it is. Um, but yeah. no, this, this, this is why the NBA is Oscar worthy because you can't predict these, these injuries. You can't predict can't. how people are going to from these injuries, how people are going to adjust from these injuries. And so it has truly been whatever you thought was going to happen. Throw it out, throw it out, rewrite exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> And, you know, talking about rewriting really quickly, uh just how special will it be really like how special will it be if Denver is actually to move on past the series? Because what happens every Uh time we see Denver in the playoffs, folks are going, okay, they're good in the regular season, but we just don't believe in them in the postseason. But I think Denver has a chance to actually change that narrative around them and potentially again, potentially don't get on me, folks, potentially go the distance. I'm just saying because (laughs) if they can keep playing. Like they're playing, and the Suns team, many of us had them going to the championship, but again, they look a, they look a bit different. They just do. I mean, I was hitting my staples, you know, my panic button on my desk multiple times watching the Suns in this series just because it shouldn't have been this hard. It should not have been this hard. So I'm just saying, Denver folks, this might just be this might just be the year that y'all get to say y'all kept you know doubting us before, but there could be something right. special in the water. And how special would that be for Nicole Jokic? Right, That'd I agree. Be a, a Dave, legacy win for him <laughs> it would be, be huge it would be dave I, I i'm so sad we're out of time to talk about all these things but i'm so grateful that you were on the show we appreciate yeah. your insight thank you so much for joining us you got to come back thank you yeah thanks for having me we'd love to see you guys bye hey thank you for watching brother from another if you haven't hit that subscribe button go ahead and do that now don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.